Hi, everyone. Welcome to Forbes Talks. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Chloe Sorvino, who's written about Mr. Beast, Chloe. I want to start with the fact that you are the food and agriculture writer. How did you get on to that story? Yeah, so Mr. Beast is Jimmy Donaldson. And I had actually pitched this story around two years ago when Jimmy launched a burger chain called Mr. Beast Burger, which was a ghost kitchen in 2020. And I was hearing that it was the fastest growing restaurant chain in the country. Now it has 1,700 or so locations. And so I went down there to North Carolina to visit Jimmy and hear all about that and a lot else that's in his growing empire. So so tell us a little bit, obviously, um, you know, obviously big in food, but not known for food. He is this incredible YouTube star. Give some context as to what made him famous, I guess going back 11 years at this point, right? Even though he's only 24. Yeah, so he is a superstar creator. He's the top earning creator in the country. He is the top earning YouTuber. He has 112 million plus subscribers. He spends millions of dollars on these videos that he'll put out. And if he doesn't like it, he makes so much money that he just, you know, doesn't put it out. Sometimes he'll give it to a friend or, you know, he'll just eat the cost. Um, but at the end of the day, he's a perfectionist filmmaker. He's building this massive studio for content creation in Greenville, North Carolina. And uh, it's really something to behold. You really can't underestimate how big of a reach he really has. So he is on, I take it, our 30 under 30 list, right? And and give us some sense as to um, the, the scope of what he does. First of all, his technique that I know him for the guy who puts people in a circle and the last person out gets 500,000 or he recreates squid games. I mean, they're very elaborate stunts. This is not somebody playing a video game and we're watching him do it. Did you get some sense as to like how he plans these things or just even the sheer amount of money and people it takes to pull off these, you know, what's essentially more entertainment than stunts? Absolutely. So Jimmy Donaldson actually, you know, was on our 30 under 30 list a few years ago. Ah. And it's just gracing our cover today because he's just had such a massive success. He's estimated to make around $110 million this year alone. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's really the artist behind these videos. He's a perfectionist. You know, the day that we visited, um, he had started the day before at 9 a.m. and he was up until a solid 5 a.m. of the day that we, the four whole Forbes crew came to interview and do the photo shoot because, you know, he was just with the editors tweaking different videos, working on concepts, making his posse surrounding him, you know, play a game of chess around, you know, late into the wee hours. But uh, he has really been studying virality since he was 11, he says, and he has made a point of, you know, saying, no, this perfect combination of giving money away and um, spontaneity and doing this absurd, you know, larger than life stunt creation that um, has really been what he's become known for. And some of the videos truly are wild. You know, what behind every 11 year old, my, my belief is there tends to be a parent, you know, I mean, genius, though they may be, parental access, you know, ecosystem of, of support. Did, did he have somebody in his family who really was instrumental at that age, at least at getting him onto the platform and helping him establish himself? Well, actually quite the opposite. You know, he was the younger son of a single mother who worked in the military and worked two nights a week you know, overnight. And so he was alone a lot at home uh, at night, you know, watching YouTube, watching videos and trying to figure out, you know, again, what is viral. And uh, at a certain point, at some of those late nights, he started borrowing his brother's old computer that didn't even have a microphone and bare bones, you know, putting together an equipment rack and then, you know, try, starting to do his some of his very earliest 
crudest videos. Um, and, you know, it eventually, you know, as he got views and subscribers, was able to make money, he reinvested it. The big turning point from him was actually, you know, getting uh, a used iPhone that he could shoot video on because it had a microphone in it. Um, but his mother didn't actually even really know what he was doing up in his room. She had no idea. And he only told her really when he reached around 10,000 subscribers. Wow. That's the power of parental neglect. Yeah, but she really, you know, forced his hand because, you know, he was living at home. He, you know, he was doing YouTube since again, he was at age 11, started the channel when he was 13. And, you know, he, he ended up going to community college and a few weeks into community college decided that he really could just do this whole YouTube thing full time. But his mother, who actually got to interview because she still works for him, uh, she was down in Greenville and she had previously told him that, you know, if he did it full time, she just wouldn't let him stay under her roof. He had to, you know, she didn't want to kind of let him mooch. Um, and what happened was when he dropped out to do it, she stuck to her word and kicked him out. So he dropped out of college and she kicked him out of the house and he ended up renting a house nearby and they had a good relationship. And, you know, she eventually, you know, as the company grew, she became, you know, an HR person, a different accounting role over the years, an advisor, um, still very much uh, has a big office that I saw him um, as a key part of the company. Um, and even, there's even a video of him surprising her with $100,000 to pay off her house mortgage. That's that's on my to-do list for my kids, too. Surprised me with $100,000. But um, I, I'm curious about, because he's such a well-known character in a way, what, what was he like when you saw him? Was he what you know, he appears to be on, on these videos. Did you, anything notable that stood out to you? Because, you know, we don't often get to meet these people when they don't have a camera pointed in their face. So Jimmy was always a really shy kid and he continues to be a kind of shy and socially awkward creative uh, in real life. He's extremely tall. He has a very big presence but at the same time he's understated and you know doesn't really you know talk unless he he really really wants to um often surrounded by a posse and uh you know was a bit uncomfortable at the idea of a photo shoot with a lot of people watching him which you know i think a lot of people can relate to i think you know the the personality you see on the youtube videos and i asked him about it you know it's it's this kind of more outgoing side of himself that uh, is more of a character in a lot of ways. And he feels way more comfortable talking straight into a camera than sometimes he does talking to people. So as an entrepreneur, I've been intrigued by his business model and you do write about this in the sense that, you know, a lot of people, maybe they become famous. And then of course, lots of brands come to them to try and get them to endorse, you know, the products and such. Talk about his trajectory, because he really, in a way, is kind of productizing his fame. Like you mentioned the restaurant. Is that a different model? Is it sort of, is it, is he a real pioneer in that model? Because there's so many different versions of how creators become successful and monetize that success and fame once they get it. Yeah, I think what you really can't underestimate here is the veracity of his audience and his subscribers they are truly obsessed and where he has been productizing it has been showing with results and he hasn't been you know i talked to his his folks about this a lot and they wanted to make clear you know, we're not becoming a Margaritaville. We get offers for the cruise lines. They said they get the big offers, the biggest offers they could possibly dream of. And, you know, uh, he's he's doing this burger chain, which is, again, one of the fastest growing in the country and now has around 100 million in revenue a year. And only from, again, a bunch of virtual kitchens, but still, you know, only one real full restaurant they're going to be building a lot more in the next year to come so there's a lot of growth uh, and they all he also launched this uh feastables line a chocolate grocery store brand uh that he had launched with the crazy willy wonka themed video on youtube of course and 
if there's a video game coming out, there's a lot more that we'll be, you know, adding to, but he's really trying to maintain a, a funnel and food specifically seems to be a big area of focus for him. He's not as prolific as some other YouTube stars. You know, obviously what he does put out is more of an event. You know, how, um, what does that say to some extent? Maybe it doesn't, maybe it's just, you know, a unique quirk, but, um, you know, the volume and body of his work is not as large as some people who are constantly creating um, a stream of videos. He, he seems very deliberate. Does he plan it out for quite some time? Yes, absolutely. They spend months from, from start to finish of idea to shoot, to concept, ideation, editing. He is uh, a perfectionist, again, in every sense of the term. I mean, he was up editing until five in the morning of the day of his Forbes magazine cover shoot. <laughs> Had someone who doesn't really care about the bags under their eyes, you know? Um, and it's because he loves what he does and he has, has been quoted in my feature and in videos and in our extended interview that we did in Greenville about how he just obsesses over it. He says he's like a zombie. It's like cocaine to him, he says. He is just at that phase, he compares himself to like an early, early Elon Musk where he's just so in it right now and he wants to sell all of his belongings and just you know have everything he owns on a bed that's in the office and live there and he just wants to work and, and build this and one day maybe he'll do something else if he can maintain this crazy place in the universe that he is. But you know, for right now, he's just a zombie doing this studio thing, editing, figuring out these videos day in and day out. Is there any downside? I'm, I'm comparing him probably unfairly to people like uh, Bo Burnham, very different, obviously, but, you know, people who got fame at a very early age and then have in some ways turned against or, or be have a complicated relationship with the medium that made them famous, especially if you're extremely shy. Um, is that something he has talked about or has he really just embraced the potential and it's all good? I mean, he just really has a pulse on his audience. His audience is quite young um, and they are obsessed. Uh, and, and, and in that sense, he he's really a long YouTube believer and they're loyal to him. Um, that said, I mean, I think he'll say it himself and he has said it to us in the interview that we got and he rarely speaks to media by the way um but you know he you know says that it's it's going to be his kind of key challenge in the next decade to maintain this position with his fans and maintain this obsession that they have for him uh because right now it is the biggest and most loyal audience in the entire world in some ways was there anything that you gleaned that you thought, huh, that's something that is actually useful in terms of the way he works, his mindset around work? Certainly he captures that Gen Z zeitgeist, but anything else you walked away with sort of thinking as a, this is why this guy is so successful? It was refreshing to me to see, you know, while he has Lamborghinis often in his videos and the, that TikTok generation is known for this, like loving this like uber luxe life in so many ways that he has shunned that too. And he doesn't have that Lamborghini that he's driving to work anymore. Um, and he's really embraced, you know, trying to not have a really exorbitant lifestyle. He talks about that, like fueling his entrepreneurialism because he's able to just reinvest all of his profits and everything he earns from these millions and millions and billions of views, you know, back into this next crazy stunt video. And if he had like the 20 Lamborghinis and huge houses with crazy mortgages, he just wouldn't be able to do that and have the risk there. Um, and so I think he's in this very unique phase of life where he's making so much cash and able just to reinvest so much back and really is able to live uh, a very, very cheap lifestyle in Greenville, North Carolina and not have a burn a lot. Um, and so you're seeing this wild Gen Z take on like the American dream playing out on YouTube. Um, before I let you go, did you get a sense of his mission, you know, in terms of what I know certainly he does want to reinvest. He doesn't want to be living that lifestyle. But um, what purpose does he think 
that his videos serve other than entertainment? He talks a lot about collaboration and he really does, uh, you know, share videos and have other YouTubers in his videos to promote their own work as well. He does a lot of videos around environmental cleanup of beaches, which is, uh, inspires a lot of youngsters. He has his own foundation, which feeds a lot of people. I visited some of the warehouses of just food that they distribute. It's a massive undertaking that they're doing, but they're also doing, you know, creating water wells in Africa and just so many amazing community-based projects. Um, and so I think there's just a lot of different ways that he's just spending money and giving people the ability to kind of run with some passion projects. Um, and so it, it's interesting, you know, he did this, you know, team trees campaign a few years ago that ended up getting more than 600 different influencers involved in planting 20 million trees around the country. And, you know, while, while there's a lot of other use and a lot of other things that just besides tree planting, I think that was a, a pretty big in all honesty, you know, uh, a, a goal and achievement um, compared to some of the other types of anemic campaigns you see sometimes. Um, and so, again, this is only a 24 year old. He's been throwing a lot of money at him for a few years, and we'll see what continues to happen. But he wants to be in this game for a very long time. Yeah, sounds like he will be. Thanks, Chloe. Thanks.